Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games and part 10 of our How to Play Kill Team series. I'm Lee and in this video I'll be taking you through all the rules for movement. So far in the series we've gone right from part 1 where we looked at the tools of war all the way up to part 9 where we looked at kill zones and terrain. But now it's time to look at movement and how we can move our operatives through this terrain. As your operatives navigate the kill zone, terrain features may restrict their movement. To manoeuvre across or over them, your operatives must traverse, climb or jump. Let's start with the traverse rules. A traverse is when an operative must clear a small obstacle in their way, such as a barricade or pipe. During an operative's move, it can ascend and descend terrain with the traversable trait at a cost of one white circle, but cannot finish a move on top of it. If this is not possible, it cannot traverse it, it must move around it instead. A note that a traverse is not a climb, the operative simply vaults over the obstacle in their way as it moves horizontally across the kill zone. Let's look at a quick example. The operative here has a move characteristic of three white circles. One white circle of its move characteristic must be used to cross the traversable terrain feature, meaning the operative can move a total of two white circles. You could think of that first white circle as a cost that they have to pay to be able to make the traverse movement action. Now let's look at the jump rules. A jump is when an operative crosses a gap between terrain that is within one blue square horizontally and one white circle vertically from one edge to the other. The operative must be within one black triangle of the edge of the terrain feature the operative will jump from. To jump, take a jump test for the operative by rolling 1d6. On a 1, the test is unsuccessful. The operative remains where it is and that action ends. On a 2+, plus, the test is successful and you can move the operative across the gap. Only the horizontal distance an operative moves during a jump counts towards how far it has moved. And note that an operative cannot jump instead of climbing. If an operative simply wishes to ascend or descend a terrain feature, it must drop or climb instead. And remember that an operative must finish a move in a location it can be placed. If this is not possible, such as if an operative does not have enough movement to reach its intended destination, it cannot attempt the jump. In this example, the operative intends to cross a gap between two terrain features without dropping and or climbing. The operative is within one black triangle of the edge of the terrain feature it will jump from, and the gap is within one blue square horizontally and one white circle vertically from one edge to the other. The operative's controlling player rolls 1d6 and the result is a 5. Therefore, the test is successful. The operative moves across the gap and only the horizontal distance it travels is counted for the move. Now let's look at the rules for climbing. A climb is when an operative ascends or descends a terrain feature that it cannot traverse across during a move. First, the operative must be within one black triangle of a physical and climbable part of a terrain feature to climb it. A wall, a pipe, a chain, things like that. The operative can then climb that terrain feature, counting the distance it travels towards the total distance it moves, rounding up any incremental distances of less than one white circle to one white circle. Remember that an operative must finish a move in a location it can be placed. If this is not possible, 
such as if an operative does not have a high enough move characteristic to reach its intended destination, it cannot begin the climb. This means an operative cannot finish a move partway through a climb. An operative can, however, perform a dash action during a climb in order to reach its intended destination. Let's go through an example of climbing. And here you can see that an operative with a movement characteristic of three white circles intends to climb onto the next level. It's within that one black triangle of a physical part of the terrain feature it can climb. It then climbs the terrain feature. It must move a vertical distance of more than one white circle, but less than two white circles. As increments are rounded up, it moves two white circles vertically. To reach a location it can be placed, it must also move horizontally, and the operative has one white circle of its move characteristic remaining, allowing it to move on to the next level. You could then move the operative the full white circle distance onto the level. In this second example, an operative with a movement characteristic of three white circles intends to climb onto the next level. It first moves that one white circle to be within one black triangle of a physical part of the terrain feature it can climb. It then attempts to climb the terrain feature. It must move that two white circles vertically with the increments rounding up and one white circle horizontally. As this would exceed its movement characteristic, it cannot begin the climb. However, if the operative has any action points remaining, it could perform a dash action to complete the climb, so long as it hasn't already performed a dash action during its activation. Now let's look at the rules for dropping. A drop is when an operative descends from height without climbing. The operative must be within one black triangle of the edge of the terrain feature it will drop from, and the intended location must be vertically within three white circles of the level that it occupies. The operative can drop from that terrain feature, counting the vertical distance it travels towards the total distance it moves, rounding down any incremental distances of more than one white circle to one white circle. Note that a total vertical distance of one white circle is therefore ignored. And remember that an operative cannot move through any part of another operative's base unless it can fly, and we'll look at that in a second. Therefore, if the intended location has any operatives that would prevent the operative moving in that direction, it cannot make the drop. Before we go through the example, let's look at flying over terrain. And operatives with the fly keyword ignore vertical distances when moving on and over terrain features, meaning they do not need to climb or traverse and can move freely across gaps instead of jumping. In addition, when they drop, their intended location can be any vertical distance and the vertical distance they travel does not count towards the total distance they move. Now let's look at that example for dropping. Here you can see the operative intends to drop to the next level. It moves one black triangle to be within one black triangle of the edge of the terrain feature it will drop from. The operative then drops from that terrain feature. The horizontal distance it moved is measured as normal. The vertical distance it moved is more than one white circle, but less than two white circles. As increments are rounded down, it moves one white circle vertically. After the model has finished the drop, it can complete its move as normal with any remaining movement characteristic that it has. That now covers all the rules for movement and moving through terrain. So come and join me for the next part in this series when we'll look at ways to play and focus on open play. You can find loads of other videos on my channel for Kill Team and other games, and these videos include painting, deep dives, how to play, and many other topics.
I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful and if you've got any questions please add them in the comments section below it'd be great to hear from you and if I can help you out in any way that would be awesome too but thanks so much for watching can't wait to see you in the next episode of the series please like if you like it subscribe for more videos like this and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on tabletop skirmish games if you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel, then please check out my Patreon page. And thanks to everyone who's joined so far. It's really awesome. We hang out on Discord, talk about the hobby, share ideas and help each other out. And you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else. So I'll put a link in the description. And it'll be great to see you there.